Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna start a super super exciting video because today I will start my vlog for the Broken Earth trilogy. Now my goal is to read all of these books pretty much back to back because I just got the box set for Christmas and I'm so excited. I've been eyeing these books for so long and I've been meaning to read them but I never owned them. So now that I do, nothing is holding me back and we will discuss these books here. Now, uh, today I will start with The Fifth Season and these books are a bit chunky. Um, for fantasy they're alright I guess, um, but yeah. We'll see how long it takes me. I will update you once I've reached around the halfway point and then when I'm finished. And I will, as I said, talk about all three books in this vlog. So if you're interested in that, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you can feel some of my excitement. Um, I really hope that this is gonna be a five-star series for me. It is for so many people, so yeah. Just excited. I'm just excited. I want to fall in love with these books. So let's hope that this happens. This is what you must remember. The ending of one story is just the beginning of another. This has happened before, after all. People die, old orders pass, new societies are born. When we say the world has ended, it's usually a lie, because the planet is just fine. But this is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends for the last time. So I'm currently 50% through the fifth season and I'm absolutely loving it as I expected I would. Uh, this book so far is pretty amazing. Now uh, in this book we follow three perspectives. We have the perspective of what I would guess is the main character. That one is written in second person, which you've probably heard about this series before, and uh, that's kind of the starting point of the book, but then you get two other perspectives as well. Now with this first perspective, you're basically following a woman. She has a ability that she can manip manipulate the earth, she can basically um, do like little shakes and stuff like that with the earth and that is like a very very dangerous um, skill to have because it is highly stig stigmatized in this world so she has hidden that from her community where she lives but uh, one day she comes home and her husband has killed her son and the husband and her daughter are gone and uh, that's kind of where we meet this character and we follow her from there and uh, this is basically the mm, storyline that is definitely said at the end of the world. So uh, while she is grieving her son, there is something happening that we get a little bit of information about right at the beginning of the book that will probably bring about the end of the world or at least the world as it is known up until that point. The other two perspectives are a bit different. Uh, they are set um, during a different time frame and it's a little bit hard to guess what happens when in this book but we follow two other women or girls. Um, one is a small child when she is kind of detected to be also one of these people who have this ability um, to manipulate earth. So as I said this is highly stigmatized so her family basically put her in the barn and uh, she has to stay there, she's not let out, until a strange man comes who uh, takes her away to this school for people with her ability. 
and uh, we kind of follow her in that school and we see how they're trained. And then we follow a third girl, uh, she's a bit older, also again I think a different timeline and she was uh, basically she was brought up in the school and she's now at an age where she starts doing her own little assignments uh, for this school. It's called the Fulcrum, I believe. So uh, basically communities can contact this Fulcrum and say we have a problem with, I don't know, a mountain <laughs> or something like that. And then they will send uh, one of their one of their uh, pupils who have that special ability to take care of it. And the uh, people who are part of this fulcrum, even though they are still stigmatized, have a little bit more protection because they are part of this society. And uh, yeah, they have like very high regulations and uh, people trust them just a little bit more. So these are the three perspectives that we're following in this book and I, st I still don't have a favorite. I think all of them are so fascinating, um, especially towards the middle of the book. We mainly follow the perspective of the girl who's doing the assignments and um, her storyline is quite disturbing, but really they're all quite disturbing and there's definitely moments when you think like it's good that this world is ending because this world is pretty shitty, especially for women and especially for women with this power. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm very intrigued to see how they all connect because as I said, it's very difficult to tell the kind of time frames of these storylines, so that's uh, something I'm so intrigued to see. Again, uh, I think it is really cool to uh, see these different perspectives on this world and I don't know, I really can't explain it, but it's really well done so far and I'm just so intrigued and even though I don't really understand everything that's happening, I think it pulls you in so well and yeah, I'm just loving it. There's a lot of horrible things happening in here. As I said, it's a pretty shitty world and these uh, girls and women are treated very, very poorly because of who they are and what they can do. Um, there's a lot of mysteries, so for example, the what I said would for me be the main character. She's traveling with a little boy and he's not human, but we don't really know what he is. And uh, also the girl with the assignments, she just um, did something for her job and that set off stuff that I have no idea what it will do. But it sounded pretty crazy, so yeah, there's definitely a ton of mysteries, but I think also a great focus on like the stigmatization of um, people and I think it's such an interesting discussion to see how these people who are the powerful ones, the ones that really can do so much, they have such strength and they are the ones who are discriminated against. And I think that's so interesting to see how that works and how this world makes it work. And especially also the role that self-stigmatization plays in that. So that's definitely something I'm interested in, not only uh, as a person, but also as a researcher. So that's pretty cool to see in here, definitely. So I think that's all I'm gonna say for now. So this video isn't like 10 hours long. But as I said, I'm enjoying this book so much and I can't wait to read the second half and let you know how it ended. But for now, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a five star. season by N.K. Jemisin and I thought I'd give you a quick update before I head into the second book of the series. 
This was a super easy five star for me. I think this book is fantastic, an absolute masterpiece. I loved it. The ending gave me goosebumps, made me speechless. And I was actually, I finished it on the train and I had about 20 minutes of train ride left. And I was just sitting there looking out of the window, reminiscing, thinking about this book because it's just so fantastic. Um, I really love the characters. I think that this does a really good job of creating very um, very real characters. I felt like I could really picture these characters and got a very good feel for them. And still, you know, with some characters, uh, it's just so well done that you don't recognize them in a way in certain situations. And I think, yeah, it's just so well done. I really loved it. And um, I can't really say too much about the ending uh, without spoiling it. So I think I will go into a bit of a spoiler part where I talk about more detail. So if you don't uh, want to be spoiled or if you haven't read this book yet, then I would recommend skipping over, over the next part. I will do like the little chapters so you can see where I stop talking about spoilers. But yeah, um, this book is so much. So spoilers ahead now. Um, I had a feeling very early on that, um, and I'm sorry if I mispronounce the names, I'm just not good with them, but I do my best. I had this feeling that Damaya and Cyanide would be the same character, <laughs> just in different periods of her life. And I, uh, yeah, I was just very much feeling that, but like also unsure because you can't really be sure in the first half, but then before the ending it was actually confirmed and I just loved the way that worked out. I must be honest, I wasn't quite sure if Essen, Essun, whatever she's called, is the same person as well. I wasn't quite sure about that one just because of the perspectives, because um, her perspective is the one in second person. So yeah, I was, wasn't quite sure, but it kind of made sense that it's all the same person, just different points in time, especially since the like timelines weren't made clear so it was not that easy to guess what happens at which point in time um, but yeah I think it's so well done the moment you realize that it is all the same person and I must admit the moment when Hoa said that Alabaster was there to see Esun in the um, geode Oh, I had goosebumps all over. Oh, that was such a powerful moment because you already know what's going to happen in the next chapter, basically. And it's just so heartbreaking. I mean, a lot of this book is very heartbreaking. I think in the beginning, there's a lot of like horrible stuff happening too. But then you kind of get sucked into more of the mystery aspects and especially... Um, with the, you know, you have this like kind of mysterious thing in every um, timeline. So you have the Maya with, um, what's what's her name? Binoff, something like that. Um, where they uh, find the thing <laughs> in the fulcrum. And then you have the um, timeline with Cyanide when they uh, get to the island, which oh, I love that part. Uh, <laughs> I really loved that romance. I thought it was so beautiful. And yeah, the moment I realized that it is really as soon as well, and you know that tragedy is about to happen to this like island and their like wonderful relationship and their son, it's just so heartbreaking. <laughs> mm, yeah, that was so much. Um, and then obviously with assume um, when you reach that underground geode city um, and you know that things are gonna 
come out now and you're gonna understand so much more so I thought that was very well done that you know in the beginning oh I have to switch my arm <laughs> in the beginning you uh, get to know the world and the characters and you see the horrible things that are done to our genes and then in the second part these kind of more mysterious aspects uh, take over and then also as I said this uh, beautiful relationship um, of cyanide and alabaster and what's his name Oh, I don't know. His name is the one I always forget. Uh, but you know, the third, the third guy. <laughs> I kept picturing him as the Aquaman guy. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct, but yeah. I think my favorite character, apart from the main character who you get to love so deeply, um, my favorite character apart from her is Alabasta, which is obvious. Um, he's so amazing and I think that I just loved him from the very first moment when you kind of understand why Cyanide is at his place and uh, yeah what they're supposed to do and the kind of innocence of him when he says that at the beginning he thought that these girls coming to him actually desired him it was just oh, so much and yeah, Alabasta is just my, yeah, he's my favorite. Uh, I know he isn't perfect, but I understand him so well. And if I would have to live in this world, I I would probably feel a lot of the same things. I don't know. Um, also with the beginning, I, I thought very early on that it is Alabasta. Uh, I think it is made quite clear. But then tr towards the end I was like, maybe it is the son, I think it's Koru, something like that. Um, I thought maybe it is him, but then, yeah, <laughs> that, that didn't happen. So uh, I thought that was done so well too, that you have this suspicion that it is Alabaster in the beginning, but you are not quite sure how and why, so yeah. That was that was so well done as well and then the last thing that that's the one thing that actually almost broke me where I actually <laughs> almost started tearing up in the train is uh, Hoa or whatever he is they are whatever um, the moment uh, you realize what he is and um, the moment there is an I to the U, that was oh goosebumps all over. I was tearing up. There was a guy like passing me in the train. I was like sitting there reading my book and he like went somewhere and I had like tears in my eyes and he was probably like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> but yeah, oh, that was such a moment. That was such a good moment. Like, yeah. Yeah, that, that whole chapter, that whole chapter just brought it all together and it was, it was amazing. So yeah, overall thoughts, uh, five stars and I will start the Obelisk Gate later tonight <laughs> and I'm so excited. So I'm now 50% through the Obelisk Gate. I managed to read the first half of this book quite quickly, which makes me very, very happy. And I hope that um, the rest of this book will be uh, like that too. Right now my life is so super busy that I just have to, you know, really carve out the time to read. But uh, yeah, very happy that I'm already 50% through this. Uh, a lot of the reviews that I've seen said that the first half of this book is very slow, that um, after, you know, the finale of the fifth season, this feels a little bit slower and uh, takes people a little bit of time to get into this book. I did not have that. <laughs> I loved the first half of this book. Um, I flew through it. I couldn't put it down. I thought there was not one chapter that I wasn't really interested in. 
So I don't really understand those reviews, but um, yeah, I think it's just a personal thing. And as I said, I just can't agree. I really love the first half of this and it is just as good as the first book to me. Now, what is different about The Obelisk Gate is that you have new perspectives. So in the first book, we follow three perspectives. And in this one, we have three perspectives as well, but they're different. So we still follow um, as soon in the yeah. A second person perspective that we have on the first book but then we get two new, pers new perspectives and I don't want to say what they are because uh, it kind of spoils some things and it's two characters from the first book where we're not really sure at the end whether they're still alive so I thought it was an interesting twist to uh, uh, give them their own perspectives in this book and I also really like the way that it is included into the kind of narrative of this book because if you've read the first book you know that there is a very distinct um, kind of voice who is telling the story and there is a reason to it and this book tries to make it work with these new perspectives as well and I think that it does work. Um, yeah, so as I said, this book is just a huge win for me as well. I can totally see it be five stars again. I don't think that I will be one of those people who like the first book more. Um, I think they're equally good and reading them back to back definitely uh, shows me that I don't have a favorite. Um, so yeah, since everyone says that the first half of this book is so much slower, I think I will enjoy the second half even more now and I'm so excited to get into it. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy. This reading experience is exactly what I needed and what I wanted from this series, so I'm very glad. Um, I think I will do a little bit of a spoilery bit now. I will uh, mark it in the chapters so you can jump over it if you haven't read The Obelisk Gate yet. So uh, yeah, just so be warned, um, some spoilers ahead. But uh, yeah, the two perspectives that we get uh, um, in addition to Asun's perspective are Nasun and Jaffa. So we have her daughter's perspective in this. And we do start with the moment where she finds her father having murdered the little brother which I think is an interesting choice. So we definitely get her whole story, even though in the beginning it's not really synchronized with Asun's story. Um, but I think that definitely works. So we see her journey and um, I think that she's an interesting character to follow. She reads very, oh, no, she is very young. Um, she reads a little bit older, I think. But I was very intrigued by the idea to follow her. And honestly, I thought she would be older. I don't know why I had this idea that she's already a teenager, but she is quite young still. And um, I think her dynamic with her father, who kind of abducts her, but also she wants to go with him. And I think that's a very important part of the of her story that she wants to go away um her dy dynamic with the father is very interesting and the way it is described i think that her having this very complicated relationship with her mother is very interesting as well um i think i mentioned that before in some videos but i had a very difficult relationship with my mom when i was younger and i can definitely see some parallels here because um as soon is trying to protect her daughter but in a way that uh, doesn't really look like love uh, she's very harsh very um how do you call that in English? Like, not stern, but like, you know, she sets up a lot of rules and she doesn't always take the time to explain things to Nasun. So um, I totally see how they have a very strained relationship. And uh, what I think is interested in, interesting in that is um, the way that uh, even though Nasun doesn't really see it, she needed that preparation of her mother to now survive the situation she's in. And I think that is very interesting to see because in the first book we only get Asun's perspective and that is the one of a mother who wants to find her daughter. But uh, mother-daughter relationships are rarely easy. So um, yeah, I think that is very smart to build into this. 
Now with Jaffa, I do I was so surprised that he gets his own um, chapters, and they are fewer and shorter, I think. Um, but it's still very interesting, and that you don't really get his perspective to tell his story. You only get what you need, uh, which then fits into a Zoom story, which I think is very interesting. So he definitely is still not a main character, even though we get his perspective in a way. And what happens to him is like very interesting, but also not really clear in the first half of this book, at least not to me. I do have some suspicions what's happening, but yeah. Um, I think it's so interesting the moment when uh, uh, Nasun and her father show up at this moonfound calm. I was like, oh my god, no, they're gonna meet. And that was just such a moment. I mean, the way that uh, the kind of history he, it repeats itself, but kind of not, is so interesting. The parallels between Nasun's childhood and Esun's childhood. That was, yeah, very unexpected and I'm intrigued to see where that relationship of Jaffa and Asun will go. Um, but yeah, it's very intriguing. I had so many more thoughts when I read this yes, uh, last night, but honestly, um, there's just so much going on with the moon as well and Hoa and uh, yeah. Alabaster story, which was so heartbreaking. I think he's still my favorite character. I feel for him so much. And um, yeah, I'm not ready to say goodbye to him, but we'll see what happens in this book. Uh, so yeah, I'm loving this. I probably have more thoughts when I finish it and this video is gonna be so long. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, first half done. Let's move on to the second half. So it is done. I finished the Obelisk Gate and I loved it <laughs> as I predicted at the halfway point. I gave this five stars as well. Super fantastic. I'm so impressed with this series and I can't wait to read the last book. Now, um, I would love to talk a lot about this, but I always realize that when I finish a book, that I forget half of the things that I wanted to mention in these vlogs. Um, but yeah, uh, this was a great ending. I really thought um, that the connections that were made were so great. I, oh my God, the, the ending, oh my God. <laughs> I really don't know what to expect from the last book right now, um, but yeah, I could go in so many directions. But yeah, um, I think that this book is just as good as the first one. I really don't see any differences in uh, quality here and I would highly recommend you pick this series up. I think I will talk a little bit about spoilers now um, because it is very hard to talk about this without spoiling it. But uh, yeah, if you haven't read The Obelisk Gate yet, I would recommend skipping the next part and um, then I will tell you about my thoughts of the last book as well. So uh, yeah, for spoilers, I mean, I don't remember what I said in the last part of this video, to be honest. My life is so hectic right now that my brain is basically not able to do anything but my work. But uh, the ending where we get that glimpse of probably, maybe, Alabaster. Oh my god, if he comes back as a stone eater... I'm floored, to be honest, um, but I, I'm i ready. I love him. I don't want to read books without him. So uh, yeah, that would be so interesting to see. Also, uh, the way that Nasun and Esun are kind of put up against each other now, uh, with uh, Nasun being influenced by a stone eater that wants to destroy Earth with the moon and uh, as soon trying to recapture the moon to uh, be back um, in its rightful place and end the seasons. I think that's a very interesting setup. I thought the scene where Nasun 
kills her father was so interesting. There is this moment when she said, um, I really tried to still love you, but it's too hard or something like that. There's this like really crazy line. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I love that line so much to imagine this being said by a little girl. Mind blowing. Um, yeah, I think that the portrayal of, oh, I can't hold up all this stuff, my arms are so weak, um, the portrayal of the uh, kind of attack and what Asun did with the, uh, with the stone eaters and the crystals is very interesting. I'm intrigued to see whether we get more information on that, but I think we do. I've already looked into the next book and the first section starts with uh, Hoa talking about himself. Uh, so um, yeah, maybe we get a little bit more of the backstory of that, because obviously there is uh, Stone Eaters kind of captured in the obelisks. So um, yeah, that, it's just so intriguing. I just love the world building in this. I think with the characters, um, you love some, but I think what really intrigues me about these books are the plot and the world building. Um, obviously, I do feel for these characters, and as I said, I really love Alabaster and I really love Hoa. I'm not so much in love with Asun anymore, um, but I think yeah, I just felt with her younger selves a little bit more. I think now, uh, yeah, I don't know. I felt like she was a bit flatter in this book than in the first one, but I didn't really mind. So, yeah, um, so many players, so much that can happen in this last book now. I'm really intrigued and yeah, I just, I just loved it. I loved it so much. So I think I'm gonna stop right there because Nobody needs my ramblings and um, yeah, I can't really say anything else apart from that I love it. I'm really intrigued to see where the character of Tonki goes. Um, but yeah, still have one more book left, so we'll see. I'll let you know more when I'm halfway through the stone sky. So I am finally halfway through The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin and uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying this third book as well. I am very intrigued now to finish this and to find out what, uh, yeah, what, what awaits us at the end of this journey. Um, it's definitely a crazy journey and I feel like we learn so much more in this third book now. The structure of the book has changed a little bit again to the second one. So this time we are following Nasun, Nasun and Esun, um, so mother and daughter still. But we also get chapters from Hoa, but when he was something else, like in the past. And I think those chapters will eventually tell us what has happened. So uh, that is very, very intriguing. And honestly, from like the plot points, I think that is the um, perspective that has been the most interesting in the first half of this book for me personally, because I really want to understand this world and, you know, where the obelisk came from and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that's very, very interesting that we get a look into that. Um, apart from that, uh, it's still very, very emotional. I feel so connected to these characters and what they're going through, mm, especially the mother-daughter relationship as it is portrayed here. The um, last chapter of Asun that I read before reaching the halfway point right now is so heart-wrenching. Her, her journey as a mother trying to understand um, her daughter but also her kind of way of educating her daughter and what that did and their relationship. It just means so much to me as someone who has like a very strained relationship with their mother but also um, 
you know, it turned out to be a loving relationship, but it just took a lot of pain that, you know, you have to work through. This book means so much to me in that regard. And yeah, it's, it's just amazing. I think the way this is portrayed is amazing. I'm still waiting for uh, Alabaster to show up again because I'm not ready to let that go. Um, and yeah, it's just so intriguing because right now it's so open what will happen at the end and especially because of the way that the story is told, um, the perspective that we have. Um, we can't really be sure whether any of these characters survive and if they do in what way like what will become of them so yeah it's just so fascinating and so amazing now absolutely in love um i wish i could talk more in depth about it um but i think right now uh all the important things i have said um yeah I'm just so intrigued to see how it all ends now and how all of these things we now know connect uh, because I think that's the biggest question for me right now. We have like so much knowledge of this world right now but it's so unconnected so I'm waiting for like the big reveal when we actually find out what the connections are. So yeah, absolutely loving this book and um, I can't wait, I can't wait to read the final 200 pages now. I just quickly want to let you know that this book is destroying me and honestly I really should be writing my PhD thesis right now but oh, it's just so good. <laughs> hey so it is done. Yesterday I finished The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison. And I freaking loved this last book as well. I also gave it five stars. I am obsessed with the series. It is absolute perfection, in my opinion. And I'm so glad that I finally read these. And I already know that one of the other series of N.K. Jemisin will definitely end up on my TBR for next year. Because, yeah, this was just so fantastic. It's the perfect finale. I think it wrapped up the series in a very good way. I loved the ending. I was very, very skeptical whether the ending would do what I wanted it to do. And it definitely went there. And uh, yeah, also the acknowledgements were really, yeah, just really good. Like, puts it into perspective as well and you really understand where this story is kind of coming from at the end. So I, yeah, I just love it. I love it. This series is so fantastic and it's one of my favorite fantasy series of all time. Probably up there with Lord of the Rings, to be honest, <laughs> um, uh, on a different level. But still, this book did everything right. So yeah. I think I want to go into a couple of spoilers now for all of those who have read this book. So if you haven't, thank you for watching this vlog. I hope you stayed on for all this time, even though I had some spoilery parts in between. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Read this series. I will go into spoilers now. So this book was so much and in the second half I felt all of the feels mainly sad. <laughs> so many things in this book are so so sad. First of all let's talk about the fact that we get these kind of um, diary entries from Alabaster. Oh that broke my heart. Um, I must be honest, I didn't understand all of them, but just that he still was part of the story, even though he wasn't there physically anymore, was amazing. And he will stay one of my favorite characters from this world, but I honestly love almost all of them. <laughs> so yeah, but I thought it was a very nice touch to, um, yeah, let us see what he suffered through, even though he was never a character that we really followed and a lot of his like history is only like mentioned in passing. I think uh, I still wanted to know more about him honestly but uh, yeah I think he's a very important character for this story and still he kind of stays away 
somehow and we don't really get to know him that well um, but yeah I thought that was a great addition at the end again mm, then we have the whole Nasun Shafa thing um, honestly that part was the hardest for me to read and Nasun's storyline was in a way the one I was least interested in I think because this book focuses so much on Asun it is very hard to um, connect with Nasun in the same way and because they're kind of put against each other in a weird way at the end it was hard to feel for Nasun and then also because we get to know Shafa from the Maya's point of view it is very hard to see what Nasun is seeing in him and I mean that's definitely a choice but I think that also made it so much harder to connect to Nasun in a way because she does know some of these things as facts but she doesn't have like an emotional connection to them but we as readers do because we saw what happened to Damaya so um, yeah that, that was just really hard and in a way um, I do understand the way that Nasun reacts in these final chapters but on the other hand, it is always hard for me to connect to younger characters. Maybe because I maybe because I was <laughs> this younger character in a way, and I don't wanna connect to that part of me anymore. I don't know. Um that's just that's a theory. Do with that what you will. But yeah, in general, um I just sometimes find it hard to follow along with these characters that make like very irrational decisions based on emotion. That's basically what, what Nasun does at the end. So I found that to be a little bit challenging to read. And um, overall, I just felt like, uh, yeah, I felt a disconnect to her character. But I loved the other two perspectives we get in this book. So we get Hoa's perspective in the past. So we find out what actually happened to this world to cause what we're watching then in these uh, three books. And I loved that we got that deep dive into the backstory, even though, again, I did not understand everything. <laughs> but um, I think it is so interesting to see Hoa as a human and to understand what happened to him so he became a stone eater I think uh yeah I just feel for him a lot <laughs> and um I really like the kind of circle we had with um as soon saying to Hoa that he is safe to love because he won't ever go away and we have that right at the beginning of the story with um alabaster and his stone eater as well so i thought that was very clever too because when we hear that in the beginning we don't really understand what's going on there but in the end it's just like this same idea and it's also interesting to reflect on the fact that Nasun never had that with her stone eater so uh, there must be a difference <laughs> I guess and you can reflect on that so that was quite interesting as I said I absolutely love Hawa I love the way this is written I think it is quite obvious from a certain point in the series why the writing style is what it is so you can guess from it what happens at the end mm, but I still felt that the ending had its surprises so it didn't really bother me and I just liked that it felt well thought out you know I just always like that <laughs> when I feel like a whole series was um, planned through and then it was written and not the way that some series feel where you have a first book and it did really well and then the author had to continue on with the story somehow so that definitely was something that I really enjoyed about this book now talking about Esun, um, what happened to her at the end as I said I saw that coming so I was prepared for it and I think that the like ending ending was done in a very good way and I love that it kept it kind of open too because we don't know what happens um, but yeah her character it's just so complex and you get to know her and love her in so many ways and I could really connect to the fact that she's always so surprised when people love her 
even though she is a great character, but she has always known her life to be very lonely and so it always surprises her when people find something interest in her and interesting in her and wanna, you know, stay connected to her. So yeah, I loved her. I loved all the relationships she builds. Um that we then see come to a close kind of in the end and I just loved her final moments in this book because um, I was really worried about that whole mother-daughter thing that was going on. As I said, I do feel very deeply about this uh, topic and I thought that the way N.K. Jemison ended it was perfect. It was really, really perfect. She couldn't have done a better job with it and I was so happy about that because it was also the only way that it made sense for this pairing of mother and daughter and their relationship that they had. And yeah, I just I just loved it. It was so great. So I think there would be so many more things to talk about, like the amazing like cities that are described in this book and the way the obelisks were made and the kind of idea that the earth is alive and how you could you know, uh, think about that more, especially in terms of like what we're doing to our earth and what our end goals are and how we are always selfish and, you know, if our earth were alive, it probably wouldn't like us very much either. So I think in that regard, it's also a very fitting book. But yeah, you could like talk hours about this series and it would not do it justice. This is definitely something I will reread in the future. I am already excited about that because especially with Hoa's like a past perspective, I found it quite hard to keep tabs on the characters because I knew that some of them would be the stone eaters, but you don't really know which ones are the important ones in the now storyline because they have different names. And so I would love to go back and see um, again who they were just to understand the complexity of that a little bit better. But overall, yeah, I just think this this series is so interesting because it doesn't really have like one evil character. It is just the complexity of this thing and this idea of a whole world being wrong. And that that is just what makes this book so great. You don't need like one evil person. Um, it's the thing, it's the system, and in that regard it's an amazing reflection on things like slavery, racism, and uh, oppression, and yeah, everything that goes along with this. So yeah, I think overall fantastic series, absolutely loved it, read it. Let me know what you thought. Let me know all of your, th your, your thoughts about this series. Like, who's your favorite character? Um, what were things that like, shocked you or that you saw coming and stuff like that? I would love to hear. And um, yeah, I need people to gush too, basically. So yeah, feel free. <laughs> and I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye.